Ladies and gentlemen, this is a warning. Thank you. Christmas in Pittsburgh, 1988, was the coldest in years with a high of 24 degrees. There was a light dust of snow, and like countless years before, families came together to celebrate the holiday. But unlike previous years, this Christmas had a dark cloud on the horizon. Just two days later, a severed head was found in a dumpster, and so began the reign of the Pittsburgh Butcher. This goes on in San Francisco for the man known as the Zodiac Killer. The serial killer known as the Doodler. There could be a serial killer in Chicago. A Long Island serial killer. Phantom Killer. Jack the Ripper. The Oakland County Child Killer. The Atlanta Murders Case. The Freeway Phantom. Frankfurt Slasher. Four children have now been murdered. Has killed five and says he's going to kill again. Fifteen brutally murdered young women. The 24th victim. The pattern is the same. One by one. The death count started rising. Serial killing. I think it's at epidemic proportion. A man in a mask robbed, tied, and stabbed them. Strength stuck in her lap bags. Disemboweled in this alley. It is highly unlikely that these women were murdered by separate men. Where will the killer strike next? They still do not know who's responsible. They kill simply because they like it. Serial killers keep killing. Police can't answer who or why. That's the question that we'll never know. I don't want to live the rest of my life wondering if this person's going to be caught. hope they'll get answers one day. I believe that there's someone out there that has knowledge. Zodiac said he shall never be caught, and he's probably still at large. On the night of December 27, 1988, a man was behind the Great Valley Shopping Center looking for cardboard boxes in a dumpster when he saw something that made him call the police. When police inspector Floyd Nevling responded to a call of a severed head found, he figured it would be a mannequin someone left as a prank. He arrived and went around back to where the dumpster was. As soon as he opened the bag, he knew it was the real thing. The decapitation was described as crude and a terrible mutilation. Two days later, John Zelina let his black Labrador retriever, Molly, outside of his Lincoln Avenue home where she discovered something in the neighbor's front shrubs, a human lung and several teeth. The find sparked a panic and the police station was inundated with hundreds of calls reporting body parts, all of which turned out to be deer or other animals, as it was hunting Caesar. That was, until a security guard at the U.S. Steel Edgar Thompson Works building found a jawbone located near an entrance. Finally, there was enough to release a composite sketch. On January 6, 1989, the local TV station hosted a half-hour call-in show asking for information on the victim. While the show has never been made available to view online, many local children dubbed it the Headathon. Sadly, no positive leads came from the show. But police shortly thereafter received a call from a relative of 22-year-old Anthony Michalowski. Dental records would confirm the head was his. Michalowski was last seen in a bar on December 24th. However, other witnesses claim he was at a tavern in the Great Valley Shopping Center, the very plaza his head was discovered behind. The high school dropout did not have a steady job and would often disappear for long stretches. He was known to frequent Liberty Avenue. Today, the neighborhood has been gentrified, but in 1989, it was full of strip clubs and was a hub for prostitution. Regular prostitutes informed police that Michalowski had been working the street as a male prostitute. However, his family vehemently denied these claims. The autopsy showed that a high amount of sedatives were in his system, leaving investigators to theorize he either died of an overdose or was drugged and dismembered. 
Over 150 mourners attended the funeral service for the few body parts they had at the St. Peter Roman Catholic Church. Two years later, after serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer was captured, investigators questioned him on the Michalowski case because his father and stepmother lived in Pittsburgh. However, it was confirmed that he was in Milwaukee at the time of the murder. And while we are on the topic of other serial killers, this was not the first time that a dismembered body had been found in Pittsburgh. Railway workers here at the former Pittsburgh and Lake Erie Railroad were dismantling old train cars when they smelled a foul stench. Following it, they found the body of a man cut into seven pieces and placed into burlap sacks. His head was the only piece missing. While the police began investigating, an additional two more headless victims were found in nearby cars. One had been cut up the same way, while the third body was intact. Though carved in his flesh was the word Nazi, with a Z written backwards. All the men were between 30 and 40 years old, though only the non-dismembered man was ever identified. His name was James David Nicholson of Illinois. Nicholson had served three years in a Wisconsin prison for burglary and had a record of being a male prostitute. The press immediately picked up on the relationship of these murders to Cleveland, Ohio's unsolved serial killings of the Cleveland Torso Murderer. We'll be doing a separate video on those murders, but as a brief synopsis, between 1934 and 1938, 13 dismembered bodies were found around Cleveland. The heads were typically found elsewhere, but in some cases, have never been found. The victims are mostly unidentified, but are believed to have been mostly transients and many were found either on or near railroad tracks. Those same tracks that led down to Newcastle, Pennsylvania, where an additional group of bodies were found, and those same tracks that led down further to Pittsburgh. In fact, the car the bodies were in arrived less than two weeks ago from Struthers, Ohio, about 60 miles southeast of Cleveland and just 15 miles from Newcastle. Authorities believe that they would find more bodies and widen their search, but no more turned up. That year, at least. September 1941, 35-year-old Wallace Brown's headless body was found in the Monongahala River near the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie Railroad Yards. That same year, two legs and an arm were found floating in the Ohio River, and the following year, three more bodies were found. The headless body of 33-year-old Ernest Alonzo was found along the riverbank just south of Pittsburgh in the city of Monongahala. Later in August, Edward Miller's body was found along that city's train tracks and another torso was found on Neville Island, just northwest of Pittsburgh. Cleveland detectives did visit during the 1940 murders, including the famous Untouchables creator Elliot Ness, though they were never officially linked. Did the Cleveland torso murderer move south? Of the eight bodies found, none of the murders have ever been solved. A garbage man in Pittsburgh's Shadyside neighborhood was emptying trash on Culloden Way when he discovered a human thigh in one of the bins. Two more dumpsters in the area revealed more body parts, including a startling similarity. The head and jaw had been separated. The body was quickly identified this time as Michael Hickmott, an unemployed 30-year-old who was a known prostitute on Liberty Avenue. This is the former apartment building of Robert Wayne Marshall, just down the block from the first body part. A shoulder was found in the dumpster here. While interviewing residents, it was discovered that Hickmott and Marshall had been seen together the weekend before. Marshall was a self-described neo-Nazi vampire. The unemployed man spent much of his time at the gym and was taking steroids. Neighbors were shocked that he could do such a thing, but many did admit he seemed to have a quick temper. A search would reveal that he had used a total of four wood saws to cut Hickma into ten separate pieces in his basement. He shared the apartment with a blind man who apparently had no idea what happened and where his roommate had fled. Days later, a friend of his received a letter that simply said, 
I wish I could convey to you how unhappy and confused my life is. By the time you read this, I will have left this earth. This is the former Armstrong Cork Factory. This building was constructed in 1901 as a bottle cork manufacturer and operated until 1974. In 2004, it was redeveloped into the cork factory lofts you see here. But back in 1992, the factory was abandoned, and where Robert Marshall decided to drink a bottle of liquor, overdose on pills, and slash his wrist. With his death, investigators were left with no answers. The FBI assisted and believed, due to his brutal modus operandi, Marshall had almost certainly killed before. The Michalowski case was flagged for its similarities, as well as two other unsolved murders. But without their suspect, the cases were left cold. What about the eerie coincidences between these murders and the possible torso killer's murders in 1940? All victims were within the same age range, were dismembered, and of those identified were all homosexual and believed to have been sex workers, and the date of the boxcar bodies was found almost exactly 52 years to the day of Hickmott's discovery. With Marshall's suicide, did police inadvertently stop a serial killer, or was he simply using a method that he had heard about in 1988? He could also have had an accomplice. The fact remains that a number of dismembered men have been found in and around Pittsburgh over the last 80 years, and who knows for sure when someone may decide to take a nighttime stroll with a few bags to dump along the way. Now to a mystery and a bizarre case in the North Country. Body parts found out in the open in two rural areas of Yavapai County. And thanks for joining us tonight at 5, a disturbing discovery in Minneapolis today. Several body parts were found in different locations just a few blocks from Boom Island Park. Not far outside Prescott, the day after Christmas, Yavapai County Sheriff's deputies finding human body parts in two separate places. Very public area, but those remains could not have been there all that long without being discovered sooner startling discovery in Minneapolis as police have located more remains belonging to a murder victim from last week. They were searching through all of these dumpsters, through all of these garbage bags up and down this area. Sources now telling us they did find body parts back here in one of those dumpsters. We have at least two locations where human body parts were found. Obviously just a ton of questions on this very disturbing story.